and we have with us today Chris Parr, who's the founder and editor of Pursuitus, which is a travel and leisure website. I'm sure we all like travel and leisure, so I'm pretty excited. And Barclay Pollock and Missy Keller, uh, who run the blogs for TDS. And I will let them explain themselves because they're all very fascinating and I'm not good at learning all of the things. <laughs> all right, so thank you guys for coming. Um, I'd like to welcome Chris. Can you hear me? Fantastic. Well, good morning. Thank you to Social Media Breakfast of Madison for inviting us here today. Uh, and thank you for all these great brands, all of you who have come out today. We really appreciate it. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Pursuit is a site I launched a few years ago uh, and how we create compelling content that uh, drives traffic and also extends our social media channels. And I also work with many other brands to show some other case studies of how, how we create content and also uh, hear from uh, TDS, uh, a co co company that I've worked with. So I have a question for you, uh, for the audience here. It's a very savvy group. Uh, you know, what the, is the most important property on your social media channel? Any, any opinions, any thoughts? My photographs. Your photographs? <laughs> Anybody else? Twitter. Twitter? Other, other, uh, other ideas? At the core, there's a lot of, go ahead. My blog. Your blog? You. You know, your blog website is the most important channel, uh, social, media, social media channel. It's all about you and connecting with audience. Um, no matter how many social media channels you use, make sure you have a blog or website that is your landing pad. Now, everything else is a satellite. All these different elements that are out there yeah, you can spend you know, time and money on these satellites, but your mission is to encourage a visit to your landing pad, to your site. Um, there, you can connect with your, your prospective customers, engage with them, and create a great conversation. But it's always about driving them back to your site. Here's kind of an example of the world of all these various satellites that are out there. And again, at the core is your site. Uh, at the very top, I'm using the TDS blog as an example here, um, but at the top is you know their, their corporate website linking over to their to their blog, um, on their social media channels from Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, you name it, coming coming in, um, YouTube videos, sending people back down to their landing pad, uh, an email digest, what's new, again more and more ways to communicate to an audience. Um, Blogger reach, reach, you know, reach out to bloggers and other websites, getting them engaged, telling them to, to know about your brand and sending them you know, back to your site. Um, and um, employees are, are fantastic for sharing content on LinkedIn and, and Facebook. And again, it, it, all that incoming traffic. And then there's you know, paid search, uh, outbrain, and banner ads and websites. And all these, all these elements coming into your website. Um, additional drivers include Wikipedia, Reddit, and organic search. But this is the universe uh, of all these elements at the core is your site as a landing pad to, to be the main driver for all these satellites to have customers come to your destination. And while they're on your site, this is a great opportunity for you to become a trusted and valuable resource to your customers or prospective customers. And at the core, engaging content is the hook. You know, content that adds value to their days. Everyone's attention is fragmented. I think we all feel that way. You know, notifications, uh, we're inundated with marketing messages, notifications, busy schedules, uh, all of our, everyone's just too busy, right? Um, so the, the goal is to cut through the clutter with meaningful content. So this includes photos that inspire, uh, insightful interviews, contests that generate excitement. So I always talk about, you know, what can we do to incite and ignite your audience? So how can we do this? We can invite engagement by asking questions, encourage your audience to show photos, tag themselves, and create a conversation. Have a meaningful rapport with your prospective customer or your owners. 
So don't base your marketing success on properties you don't own. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, they're in the business to make money. And they get to make and they change the rules. And they do it quite often. If you put all of, all of your eggs in one basket, what happens when uh, Facebook decides to change their algorithm? Um, your content, no matter how engaging, may fail to reach your attended audience. So instead, spend more of your resources on your own digital properties, your website and blog. Um, you know, this, this, is a, this is a property over which you, everyone here, uh, you have control, and really it should be the foundation of your digital footprint. I know this is, you know, I work with a lot of companies on, on websites and strategies, but in, in, in general, the old school corporate website is dead. And we're talking about the old, you know, ones that, have, that tend to be static, offering no fresh content, uh, no support for mobile, and God forbid, flash-based. In, instead, what we need to do, all brands, need to uh, innovate and disrupt. Be a progressive brand. Start acting like a publisher and create content that your customers actually want to consume. So, a bit about my background. I've been active in, in digital marketing and content creation since 1995. I've worked with a lot of brands from uh, Rayovac and Syncurator, Sub-Zero, Music Notes, TDS, uh, Biz Filings, John Deere, and, and many more. So, it, for some reason, in 2010, I, I decided to become a publisher. I, um, I launched Pursuits.com, which is a travel and leisure website. I've been a person who has, have, have always given recommendations of great places, great restaurants, great places to see and experiences, and it became uh, a natural foundation uh, for me to launch this, this vehicle. First, it was a very small venture, myself and a friend, and it has really expanded to what it is today. Um, so at the core, Pursuitus is a, is a curated list of the good things in life. Uh, our guest contributors, who share their favorite luxuries, have written for some great publications. I brought in some great rock stars to help create content and share um, our, our message on their social media channels. So written, they write for uh, Wall Street Journal, Forbes, Savor, TechCrunch, The Guardian, uh, a great group of writers who are part of Pursuitist and are continuing that message. Um, one of the reasons why I started this site was there's so many sites that are out there that are lacking substance and, and, and value or kind of a negative world that we live in. Um, you know, a lot of clickbaits and, and short, um, nothing substance. And this was kind of um, the goal to create something that was more inspiring and to, um, the re reason to live life is, is to inspire others and to um, great, give great recommendations. So again, here's some of the, you know, our content. You know, it's really to you know, inspire and, and, and share amazing destinations, places to go, and uh, fantastic things to see. Here's a review of uh, one of our reviewers uh, went to a hotel property in, in Paris. And we love to find and share great new restaurants and culinary experiences. Uh, here's an example of a writer who went to uh, some great locations in, in, in Napa, uh, some re fantastic restaurants in New York City. Um, uh, I have a writer who recently went to Vail, and also uh, there's a Ritz pop-up. Uh, Paris has a pop-up shop in, in London. But this example is some of the content we try to show and give good, good recommendations that people can come and uh, experience. And also, we try to show, share some, you know, some latest culinary trends. For example, meet the waffle gato from the inventor of the cronut. So this is a donut and cappuccino and there's ice cream mix. So this is the type of uh, content, that unique stuff that we try to share, um, share with our audience. And we, so in addition to sharing great properties and destinations, we also inter interview thought leaders, uh, from cookbook authors to wine experts. Uh, on, on the left is Amanda Hesser with the, the New York Times and F uh, Food 52, which is a fantastic food site. And on the, on the right is Anthony Giglio, uh, a writer with, with uh, Food and uh, Wine magazine, a, a great expert in, in, the, in the world. So it, can, it allows us to you know, talk to them, uh, do in-depth interviews. I, I love interviews. They're very engaging. And what's fantastic about doing interviews is that they also spread this information to their social media channels, too. Again, 
all these links that are, are these satellites that are out there that can link back to our site to our landing pad. Um, and we've also interviewed some leaders in the luxury and fashion industry. Uh, here's a, an interview uh, we had with um, the founder of, of Guilt Group, uh, the co-founder of, of Jimmy Choo, and we also interviewed Paris Hilton's mom. She's a new, new fashion collection, and um, we also interviewed her, her for the site. In addition to fashion, we also interview uh, different people in the arts and enter entertainment industry. Here's an example of an author and um, the set designer for the costume designer for for um, Vampire Diaries. So again, this is really great content. H helps us, you know, extend our reach and grab new consumers. And, and also, here's an editorial series we we, we wrote called uh, Luxury Hotels and Social Media. Uh, we interviewed the top luxury hotel leaders from the Four Seasons, uh, the Peninsula, Waldorf Astoria, the Plaza, uh, to gain insight into their uh, online strategy. So we talked to over you know, all these great brands about what's, what, what they are doing on social media, and it also helped establish us as experts and authorities in this category. So also on top of all the content, we love to uh, spotlight amazing homes and, and estates. Our most popular feature is a daily feature we call the uh, Daily Dr Dream Home. Every day, a brand new amazing uh, estate is featured. Here's two examples. And that, on the right is uh, Celine Dion's house in, in Florida that she's selling. And um, on the left is the ultimate uh, bachelor pad someplace with a pool in the water. Uh, see these great places. Um, and also, the daily dream home is very popular on our, on our, with our Facebook fans. Uh, fans love to, uh, they love to share, like, and comment. And most importantly, they're visiting our site. Um, so Facebook, for us, is one of our most important satellite drivers. It's a great way to get, bring in qualified traffic to our site on a daily basis. So this content's been very shareable. Uh, here we have you know, Steve Jobs' house in Palo Alto, um, Rupert Murdoch's uh, new 57 million dollar luxury condo in New York and another fantastic crazy state in, in California. Shareable content, uh, people engage with this content and link, click through to it. And we also recommend family friendly destinations and really experiences that really exceed their expectations. Um, in, in, in traveling with the site, been able to find some you know, wonderful experiences I didn't know about. Um, working with Disney World, they have tons of VIP services for different families that uh, are very expensive, but they're, 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 they're great experiences where you can kind of go have your own virtual fast pass, go through every, every line. Uh, one time I saw, I was in Disney World and I saw Tina Fey, kind of, we were at the, we were at the same hotel and, and uh, at the same time, and she was jumping every line. We're like, how did she get in front of this? us all the time? And so we, we, we're, we experienced the VIP service one time um, that Disney allowed us to do, which was a great experience for us. And so we also test drive the latest cars from the Bentley uh, to, the, to the Cadillac. And uh, we do share a little Wisconsin love. Here's an example of uh, the uh, Door County uh, flower, uh, Cherry Blooming, uh, Mustard Museum, Latois, uh, a local producer, a honey producer from Wisconsin. And also we interview, um, as again, we do a lot of interviews, uh, the, the president of Trek Travel, which is based in Madison. So at the core, Pursuitus is about finding and sharing the good things in life. Here's kind of our, you can't really explain it, I see this, our, our audience demographics, but we have a very affluent uh, audience, which has been, you know, which we connect up to premium advertisers. And some of the advertisers have included BMW, Rich Carlton, uh, Delta Jets, Gucci, Burberry, and there's some other fantastic brands. And, and uh, Rob Report out of New York and California handles our advertising for us. So Facebook has been our main social media channel. We have about uh, uh, 7,000 uh, 7, Facebook fans, and um, we launched it in 2010. Facebook is the most uh, popular B2C social media channel to reach affluent consumers. 47% of high affluent consumers use Facebook, 6% use Twitter. Uh, of course, you know, on, on the B2B side, it, link, LinkedIn is very powerful, but for us, it, it was an important channel for us to nurture and grow our audience because we knew affluent 
consumers were on Facebook. Um, and surprisingly, we have more Facebook fans from a, we're a, we, are, we are a small startup based in Madison. We have no offices, but we have more Facebook fans than Condé Nast Traveler, Rob Report, and uh, Savoir Magazine combined. So to show us the power of, of great content, sharing, and, and being clever on trying to disrupt traditional publishing, uh, it's been an exciting time for us. And the other shocking thing is that our fans love to be engaged with the page. They send in photos of themselves uh, shopping. Uh, they want to be identified with Pursuitist. They want to see themselves reflected in the site. So it became kind of an odd sensation that happened to us where um, one person sent in a photo to us. I, I wouldn't send in a photo to a Facebook page, but people did. And um, it was uh, them shopping. And so we just featured them. Then it became kind of like a waterfall of, uh, I logged in, you know, one day, it was like 10 more people of them, themselves uh, shopping and being active. And uh, so here are some, some fans of ours from, from the Gucci Mall in, in Europe, um, the Dior shop in uh, Dior in New York City, uh, you know, Prada shop in Milano, Burberry, Gucci store, and here's a, a fan from Monte Carlo in front of the Chanel store. So it became very odd and strange when I'm in Wisconsin and I'm getting all this, this worldwide fans interacting and sending themselves around. Um, we get a lot of invites to fashion shows, Louis Vuitton and, and Chanel, and my wife giggles at that as we're at the Children's Museum. I'm like, oh, I have an invite to a Chanel fashion show. <laughs> so, <laughs> and they also send, send in photos of themselves um, on vacation. The second photo from the left is actually uh, the hotel property sent in a photo of uh, Reynolds, uh, Brian Reynolds and his wife on vacation. And uh, so they want to get in on the game too, but this has become a very popular thing for us, uh, where more and more fans are sending in this content that um, there was no strategy behind it, it's kind of happened. Um, and so we began doing certain features like the luxury fan of the day, where we feature different, different uh, fans who are inter engaging with, with it. Um, it got a bit overwhelming at some point, uh, especially in December. We just received so many inquiries where we were getting 500 or so photos sent in per day, which was, that became almost, could become a full-time job in itself. So we had to dial it back a little bit, but uh, um, it was an interesting way where they wanted to be involved with our brand. And also that during the Christmas season, this was actually a fantastic time, uh, we received photos of Christmas trees from all around the world from Monte Carlo to Paris to Chicago. Um, one fan shared their own Christmas tree or, or, or uh, trees out, out, out and about. And it was just a very uh, <coughs> remarkable way to see this community um, to, you know, want to be involved in, in, sh in sharing what they love. So in, in, in addition to sharing our editorial on the Facebook page, we also ask questions. One of our most popular posts is called, Where in the World? We share an amazing photo of a city, and our, our readers jump to be the first to identify the location. So the very simple thing, you know, where in the world are we at? And you know, we get all, the, all these responses to it. Uh, very active and helps you know, our organic Facebook reach. And um, so that's part of what our fans do. We also create great content. Um, on, on the left is, is a review of a we wrote a review for a great handbag, Paul Carr, uh, formerly the TechCrunch, now Kendo Daily. Wrote, wrote a great uh, review for a perfect uh, handbag, which is a Mark Jacobs product, and Mark Jacobs' uh, company shared that post on their Facebook page and also on their Twitter page. Uh, here is also a review that I did with uh, the new general manager of the Four Seasons Resort in, a, in a Walt Disney World, and uh, engaging, talk about the new property. It's going to be opening up this August and they share this post with all their Facebook followers and Twitter. Again, uh, it's great content to engage with other brands, and they also share this and bring this back. Again, all these satellites at the core are bringing back to our site to increase our, our audience and increase our, our, and drive up our, our revenue. So, you know, for us, Twitter is a fantastic for on-the-go storytelling. It also allows us to engage with brands quickly on the fly. So, you know, when I go to different you know, properties or destinations, I travel a lot, I don't have a chance to pull up the laptop. But with my iPhone and Twitter, it's great on-the-go storytelling. 
very quick, very fast, be able to uh, say what city I'm at, where I'm at, or checking in. Uh, at, the, at the top left here, I, just, I had just landed at, at, at so it was a Four Seasons in St. Petersburg, a brand new property, it was a you know, former castle, and we're there for the grand opening. I took a picture of the exterior of the building and um, you know, tagged the uh, messenger brand new post, and they retweeted this to, uh, to their followers too. Uh, also locally in, in down in Chicago, we were visiting the, the, the Trump Chicago and, and mentioned Donald Trump in our, in our post. And he tweeted to his followers again. All this engagement uh, increases our our audience. And as um, was invited to the Tonight Show, Jim Fallon, uh, as we're leaving, said thank you for the had a great time. And they they tweeted this out to uh, out also to their followers. Again, this engagement allows us to hit a road, hit a city, and interact, and also mention brands. So. It's rich media that help that anybody can do that uh, really makes social media come alive and connect with audiences and for us to grow new readers and, and extend our reach. Um, so again, we engage with a lot of brands and personalities. This helps us you know, spread our, our, our content across the internet. Again, bringing people back to our site. Um, again, and here's an interview at the top. I interviewed uh, the, foundation, the founder of Four Seasons. Um, Paris Hilton shared her interview that we did with her mother, and she has one of those you know, a million view um, followers, and so that helped us expand. Um, here's the, again the co-founder co of Jimmy Chu uh, tweeting out an article that we did, and also we, we have a partnership with Business Insider. Here's an article that they helped um, share to their fans uh, and their, their followers, and helped us you know, expand our, our our realm out there, our digital footprint. And again, we also have a content distribution partnership with uh, Business Insider, and again, this helps us spread our word. And here's a, you know, and does anybody read Business Insider? You know, it's a little bit of a hooky, you know, that everything is always a little bit more shocking, more, more Buzzfeed, and they kind of, our, our, the body of our content is, is usually the same as how we write it, but they always twist the, twist the, the headlines around to, to, to get more traffic. But for us, um, it's a good, good way to get our content out there and try to reach a new audience. And we also have a daily email digest that goes out to 35,000. Kind of a quick summary of the stories of the previous day. So people uh, were, not, were able to, to visit the site. They're able to see the information and, and, and see the latest stories and come, come through. Again, all these satellites driving out there, coming back to our website. So LinkedIn is an interesting property. We aren't actively sharing our content on LinkedIn, but our readers are. Here's a conversation about um, you know, a hospitality forum within LinkedIn. It was about a, the, the Four Seasons Maui uh, offers volunteer activities and, and a great conversation that occurred. Um, this is happening more and more when you, when you look around, it, like looking at what analytics to look at. You know, where did traffic come from? Oh, you see a, a post like this or also on, on Reddit, uh, which is another community online. So here's a, an article we, we did about a luxury homes that are being built within Disney World. And um, this was also shared within uh, a Reddit, sub, sub Reddit, uh, a Disney's Reddit on a foundation there. And so for us, we didn't do this, but it was able to see that more and more people out there sharing our content. And we're growing and expanding internationally. The Times of India, the, the largest uh, uh, media conglomerate in India, is launching their own version of Pursuitist. Uh, it will blend our content with uh, local-based content. They will have their own local staff, and we, you know, we, we will have editorial control if we want to, but this allows us to expand internationally if we want to. Um, this is probably gonna be the model that we take, which is uh, work with media partners in different countries uh, to help extend, extend our brand. So um, I can't, I don't know India uh, and the local activities, but there, this team can have more of a personalized local um, luxuries you know, for, in, in their area. So, you know, being a chief content officer, I manage about um, you know, eight to ten different writers, and we publish five to ten stories per day. Um, all our writers have their own beat, their own subject matter, and I empower the writers. I, I tell them to write about what they want, and as long as it is in their area of focus. And I think the core for anything is, is, is to hire smart writers and talented writers and let them do their thing. Uh, here are some of our writers. Harvey Briggs, he's actually based in Madison. He's focused on auto. 
Um, Carrie Coolidge, formerly with Forbes, is, is one of our co-editors. She was based in New York and uh, she focuses on travel and leisure. Uh, Vilti Holstead, she is based in uh, Los Angeles, focuses on fashion and also reviews um, you know, great, great fashion shows. She travels between LA and New York and uh, Paris. Matt Breen is on technology and, and Ada on architecture and design. So you know, they submit their stories, we use WordPress, and I review them before pushing them live. Um, you know, stories are automatically pushed to Google Plus and Tumblr, and I manually share stories to Facebook and Twitter with Rich Media, including <coughs> images and video. So here's Harvey Briggs. Um, you know, he was a former partner with uh, Lindsay Stone and Briggs. He's our auto editor. Um, at the core, our writers are part of the story. They're part of making things exciting. Uh, here's, here's Harvey at the New York Auto Show interviewing the marketing director for Rolls-Royce. Uh, he test drives, test drives new cars, he goes to auto shows, and he's part of the story. Here's Harvey at the top of the Empire State Building for the 50th anniversary of the, uh, the Mustang. And um, also here, here he is test driving the new BMW i8. Uh, he was recently delivered a Bentley to play with for the weekend. Uh, and he documented his, his, his experience. So let's watch here's a clip of his video. Hi, I'm Harvey Briggs. I'm the editor of Pursuitist Auto, and I'm here to drive the 2014 Bentley Continental GT Speed. It's got a 6 liter W12 engine that makes 616 horsepower, 21 inch wheels and tires and the disc brakes are 16 inches uh, around so they get great stopping power and you need it in this car because it's 5,300 pounds. The thing I guess most about the Bentley is what's it like to drive? What really surprised me most about the Bentley was not the power. I expected it to be awesome. It is. It's the fact that with all-wheel drive, with the 8-speed transmission, this car is so easy to drive every day. And, uh, and then you get it out on the highway and uh, you realize what an awesome car you have on the field. So very simple video. Uh, he shot it with a GoPro camera, an iPhone, uh, recorded it himself on his iMac. So tips for, so you know, we work with a lot of companies also on strategies. So tip, tips, tips for corporate content creators. You know, like we do, highlight your, your blogger personalities and use their experiences to humanize your brand. Um, if you don't humanize your brand, you can't grab attention and keep your readers loyal. Uh, they want you, all of us, to be real. Uh, people connect to people, not brands and logos. So it's really a human connection, that human touch. Less logos, more being real. So also create an editorial calendar to share with your entire organization. Working with corporations, uh, we develop social media and, and content calendars that are, that are very detailed. So all companies uh, should have a calendar for every communication channel. Everyone is in the know, and that prevents overlap or confusion, I'm sure as you all have been starting off your social media channels or, or marketing communications, it's that case of like, who's doing what, who's doing there? Uh, am I duplicating that area? Am I sitting on toes? Uh, creating a great calendar prevents that and everyone's in the know and on the same page. So here's a corporate blog that I worked on, the Sub-Zero Wine blog, which was launched in 20, uh, 2006. I was developing a new Sub-Zero Wine campaign with print, brochure, uh, web, and retail. It made sense to implement a blog as the extension of the campaign, and we created a, a, a landing pad to accept traffic from all channels. Uh, we advertised on other wine sites and other, other partners. Again, all this incoming uh, traffic to the wine blog. So I, I brought in wine experts from Gourmet Magazine, Food Network, and, and Bon App. No one wanted to hear me talk about wine because I'm not, I don't know anything. Kind of, but not really. Um, we can wing it, but I think you know it's ta you know really tap the authorities. Um, so I instructed the writers to provide real and interesting uh, content to hook our owners. So again, people who maybe have owned the product to be to be engaged and recommend it to their to their friends, and also to hook in uh, prospective customers. 
And I, I told them to write about their favorite wine stories, tips and recommendations, but not to write about sub-zero wine, wine product storage, um, which took them by surprise. Michael Green, who's pictured here, actually owns the product, and he mentioned it naturally in an article. That, of course, resulted in a snarky comment from a reader. Uh, they're suspicious of product placement. So if you're very careful of, of, of how you talk about your brands uh, too much, I talk about their personalities, but I try to, in, in general, I try not to talk about the brand because people get very suspicious of what's happening and, and very paranoid of like, what's going on here. Are we being authentic to the readers? So it was very uh, eye-opening to, to see that response. So. Some CMOs, not all, um, of companies that, that uh, manage the Facebook ad budgets, they tend to be terrible at creating uh, or approving wildly compelling content. Do you agree with that? Do you see it in your, in, in, in your companies? Is it hard to get content approved? Uh, by, by definition, their stuff has to be on brand or on message. And really, who's gonna like that on Facebook? So really, the core is to really extend, expand your definition of on-brand to include fun, compelling, and shareable content that is authentically connected to your brand. With the launch of the Wolf Outdoor Grill, I went to Palm Beach uh, with a small film crew and we filmed a grilling and mixology series. Uh, we filmed uh, about 10 how-to segments covering grilling tips, recipes uh, and, and techniques. Uh, here's a good, little bit of a preview of, of this series. The first part is kind of a, a teaser that we did for our YouTube channel, and then there's one of the segments. This is very brief. And here's one of the segments. Hi, my name is Mike I'm at the Four Seasons in Palm Beach, and I'd like to make a signature Four Seasons full heel for you today. What you need to do is get a little mint, put it in the glass, one trip, one squeeze of lime, Simple syrup, fresh lime juice. Muddle it, which what it does is incorporates the flavors together, kind of crushes the mint, crushes the lime, mixes the flavors up a little bit. Add some ice. Some Bacardi rum. All right, a little extra cardboard. <laughs> Shake it. Add a splash of soda water. Garnish with the lime. And a sprig of mint. And there you have it, the Four Seasons Signature Mojito. So shareable content, who is it gonna like and share an easy to use uh, you know, mojito recipe? So again, that's the type of content, fun, engaging content that can help spread your brand and uh, people love to share that stuff. Hey, check this out, this, this, this is a fantastic video on how I can make this video. All of us could watch make this tonight. Um, and for video creation, it doesn't need to be an expensive endeavor. I know it's, everyone has a, a budget crunch. Um, you know, for Pursuitus, I shot a video called How to Make Perfect Steaks restaurant Chef Secrets Revealed, uh, which has had over 1.5 million views. I shot it in my own house uh, with a camcorder and edited on my, on my Mac. And uh, the video also features um, Lobel's Steaks of New York, uh, who sent us some steaks, some fantastic steaks, and also uh, Robert Mondavi Wine, and we featured their brands subtly into the video. And uh, it was fantastic for us, for, again, for our reach, is both the brands uh, shared that video on their social media channels. This video is also shared on Savor, Epicurus.com, and other channels. So creating great content, authentic content, again, it allows us to um, you know, you know, grow our readership and get more, more, more followers. So talking about followers, it really is all about the audience and your audience, what's right for your brand. Um, at the core, everyone, every, every audience is different. And so truly know your audience. What excites them? What are their aspirations? Um, for us in Pursuit is that's, I see that on, on the Facebook fan page, what are, they, what are they aspiring to be? And how do they want to be identified? They want to be identified with, with Pursuit is. They want to be connected to it. Um, create content that's highly, highly contagious and shareable for that audience that you know. And at the, at the basic of, of all this, this is it's really to be a storyteller. Be authentic. Uh, be real, 
find that spark that and make your marketing message connect with that audience. Um, some of the very first projects I've been involved, I, I have a background and master's degree in writing. And so when I started this very early on, uh, one of my first projects was working with Rayovac. And uh, I said, you know, this is when Michael Jordan was here. It's like, well, let's, you know, let's talk. The batteries are great, but let's talk about Michael Jordan and uh, these great, you know, sports, but, you know, individuals. <laughs> That's the content that people want to get. And again, while you're in there uh, connecting to that, these stories and these personalities, then you can learn around the, around the, the brand and, and further that relationship. But again, be a storyteller and uh, connect with your audience. So I have a next question here. You know, show of hands, uh, who's having Facebook problems? Have you seen your reach decrease recently? So we're all in this together. I think a lot of sites are, are suffering this. Um, and it ties into some of the things we, we, we were just discussing, which was, you know, how does Facebook decide which posts to show? There's, there's a few different elements here. One is, is how popular are your past posts? How popular is a, a, is a new post with those who have already seen it? Uh, does the type of post match what has been popular with the viewer in the past? So maybe they liked images before, or maybe now there's an article, it's different. And do you post uh, too often? So this is really what, the, this is very new from Facebook. They say this is some of the reasons why. There's a thousand al al algorithms out there, but these are some of the core elements here. So there's really a battle to be seen in the newsfeed. If you publish interesting posts that generate like, likes, comments, shares, and clicks, your reach increases. If your posts bore people and uh, are ignored by everyone who sees them, your reach decreases. So Facebook rewards rich content. So that's why you need to think like a publisher and be a content creator. So you know what's the solution uh, to dealing with this? Is is you know um, to deal with with the, uh, the the diminishing visibility within Facebook? You know. One is to publish content that is worthy of their attention. And really try to work at improving the quality uh, of your post with engaging content. Two is unfortunately uh, pay to play, advertise on Facebook. You know, third is to really find a way to encourage your customers and employees to share your messages on, on, on Facebook. A lot of times you may get a larger reach with uh, popular uh, employees sharing with their fans. Uh, with their, their family and friends. And also start building communities elsewhere from Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, Google+, Tumblr, uh, Twitter, or you could also create a forum on your own site. So, and to this goal uh, of creating quality content that engages customers, um, when I meet with a new client, here are some of the questions we cover. Before we launch the TDS blog, I met with their leadership and we discussed these topics. You know, what's the business objective for, for your, your blog? What's the name and URL of the blog? What are the categories? What are the, what's the voice? Are there many voices? Uh, who's your audience? Is there more than one? So what type of content will create or inform your audiences? And again, we, I, this is some of the topics we, we discuss when I meet with companies. And uh, you know, shortly, Missy and, and Barclay of TDS will sh present how they address some of these questions within their, their organization. So some, you know, here's some you know, takeaways. Uh, any advice that we have here? Uh, really engage your community with questions. Uh, ask them, you know, you name it. Find, find what works with your audience. Again, for us, it was a trial and error to find out that you know, where in the world worked for us. So I keep, there's not one silver bullet there, but you know, see, find ways that they want to be engaged and want to, want to be involved. Uh, share most amazing photos. Uh, again, it's a visual world. Uh, photos go a long way. Impactful, large, high def Im Im images are very, are very, very resilient with audiences. You know, create content that can be easily consumed on mobile devices. Make sure your blog or website is is mobile ready. Uh, so if you're sent out, if you post it on Facebook, um, they can click on through and, 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 and engage with that without going. What uh, you're on a big site that doesn't fit on your phone. And there's a lot of missed opportunities for a lot of brands I see um, because the traffic that I get on, on Pursuitist is 50% 50, 50 Facebook on, on the desktop and fa Facebook on the mobile device. So for us, it's um, important that our site is, is mobile ready. So everybody should have content that is, um, that is, is mobile, uh, supports mobile. Again, again, keep it human. Don't be a bland corporation. 
um, act like a human, connect with your audience. So the, you know, the best posts or videos come from frequently asked questions that people have. So ask some questions. Well, you know, what, how can we help you? Um, in, in, in invite that conversation. And again, for us, interviews make great content. I think it, it can work with any corporation too. Interviewing uh, the CEO uh, or a weekly digest from a from a from from your, your CEO or other leaders in your, within your organization, and also you know share original behind the scenes photos of you and your team. Again, that's what we do with the Pursuitist uh, team when we're traveling to great destinations. Again, you can do the same thing. You know, um, you know, share exclusive content, um, premier, world premiere content. You know, to to your fans. Like, you know, here's our, the the team working on our latest campaign. And again, anything that's, that's unique and, and, and puts a, identif identifies your, your brand. Uh, create interesting brief uh, product videos and, ser and services. Again, videos are a great way, you know, under two minutes, very brief, visual. And uh, testimonials are, are, are fantastic, uh, especially if you can highlight the hero, which is your customer and not your product. So how can you find a way to tell stories how your product has change the life of one of your customers. And uh, point out great people in your community with videos and interviews. Deliver instruction and teach someone how to do something. Create a how-to series. Again, teaching, education, uh, that stands above everything else. And lastly, you know, uh, keep publishing, keep creating great content and don't give up. Uh, again, Pursuit has started out as a, a, myself and a friend, and we've really expanded. We have, um, it was self-financed. We are growing organically now, and we are uh, profitable. So the main thing is, is, you know, many times it was like, well, why are we even doing this? And, uh, and really, a couple years ago, really, really took off and with some of our partnerships and relationships. So again, you know, keep on publishing. Nothing's worse than, than a blog or website that has no new, fresh content. So continue to publish and don't give up. Um, you know, it's... Sticking to it is, is part of it. And again, so I'll be back for the Q and A. Uh, I'd love to keep the conversation going. So you know, please connect with me on LinkedIn or ask any questions via Twitter.